A tribal leader with the Northwestern Shoshone, Darren Perry pulls down a simple sheet revealing the new plaque on the old monument. What a wonderful thing. <laughs> Perry got the honor, but the plaque was a project of the daughters of the Utah pioneers who wanted to replace the old one-sided account. When I talked to the president, who's a great history buff, she said, but if it's wrong, we don't want it on there. We want the right stuff on there. And so she was the one that really encouraged it to take off the old one. My family descends from survivors. For Ron, the new plaque is a step forward. There's a little bit of vindication that I'm feeling. The attack happened early on a bitter cold morning in January, 1863. There had been incidents, offenses on both sides. Settlers complained, and now the army came in force. There would be no negotiation. The soldiers immediately opened fire on the winter camp, quickly cutting down the Shoshone men. Then the massacre of women and children began. There were a few pioneers that came through the next day from Franklin, and two brothers counted. One counted 460 dead, the other one counted 489 dead. My grandmother brought me here as a young boy, and we'd sit right here. And looking down on the massacre site, she would tell him the story as she heard it from her grandfather. Those stories were not just, well, generations and generations ago. They were from somebody who actually lived it. Her grandfather played dead uh, on the killing field for four hours, and that's the way he survived as a 12-year-old. From his grandmother, Darren got his life's mission. She said, no one has ever wanted to hear our story before. One day you will have to make them listen. So that's, that's all we want. We want our voices heard. On a Russian olive tree near the Monument of Stone, people have created their own monument. Tied to the branches are tokens, dream catchers, beads, and cloth. Some of the items left here on the tree are old, showing years of wear. Others are new. All are personal testaments that the dead are not forgotten. How do we move forward? How do we take a tragic event in our life and move forward in a way that really uh, honors the people that died here? That's always been my message. Let's uh, always forgive, but it doesn't mean we need to ever forget.